This is the Asian Diaspora Project, bringing you amazing stories of Asians across the world who are making a big impact and bridging cultures. In today's episode, we sit and chat with Japanese-American comedian Aiko Tanaka about her journey breaking into the stand-up comedy scene. So let's get right into it. I saw on one of your stand-ups that you mentioned that you got your citizenship. Yes. So you're officially an American. So um, what is the best part about being Asian American for you? I think I get to shine and I get to thrive. Like I am not afraid to say this is my dream and this is what I want to do. I don't care about, it's not like not care about other people, but then like I'm here to work and I'm here to achieve my goal. And it's okay to share that because I feel like in this country, there are so many people, so many immigrants here who are trying to do the same thing. I'm doing not just like for comedy, but different field. And in Japan is really amazing country too. But sometimes uh, you have to belong to the system. You have to belong to this group, right? Which is a good thing, especially when something like COVID happens and we like to fall the wall and we, we don't even doubt because if they say this, we should do this. And American, I think we can think for ourselves kind of mentality. Does it make sense? So that's the difference. In the mood. Sometimes it, it's bad, but for me, I like that. Yeah, no, I totally relate. When COVID hit, I was actually living in Korea. And oh. it's, yeah, the same thing. Like there was no issue with any of the COVID protocols, but then I'm looking at the news and like half of America is like, no mass, you know? And it was just like, yeah. everyone does have their own like individualistic, you know, mentality yeah. and and so yeah yeah i find that i do find that interesting um you know i'm sure there's pros and cons to both you know being in japan versus being in america mm. let's talk a little bit about your uh stand-up comedy career how, how did you get into it okay so i started in stand-up first i wanted to do martial art i was doing ninchak and i was blue belt not to brag and uh, i wasn't that, that great but i just I was so passionate because I grew up watching Bruce Lee and Jet Li, and I was like really fascinated. And uh, I wanted to do weapon, but there was no place to uh, showcase. And then I did a film, it's called Fast and Furious, Tokyo Jeff. I start the race, and for that movie, we shot the music video. I think the director for the music video and the producer was saying like, I think you should do stand like a comedy. You're like really funny. And that time I'm doing, starting a race, and. You know, um, I used to do like a car shows, like you pose in front of cars, car, it's really ratchet. And, um, and I never really felt that's like me. I felt like a little awkward. They are putting outfit on me and I do this way. And then I was like, oh, okay, maybe comedy. I never thought of that. Um, uh, I went to see a comedy show at Laugh Factory and my friend PK doing a stand up. And I met this guy, Danny Cho. And uh, I went up to him. I'm like, this is really funny. Uh, and he's like, you should try it. So he put me on the comedy show immediately. And then that's my first experience. And I'm sure I did really terrible, but I loved it. I thought it was really amazing. People wasn't laughing, but I'm like, so good. <laughs> you know, like, because, like, probably that's something I wanted to do. I didn't even know. And from there, comedy is almost like, drinking coffee or, uh, I don't know, smoking crack, I don't know. But uh, you can't quit. Once you start, you cannot quit. You have to keep on doing. And I took a break during pandemic because my mom, she passed away, but she had health issues. So then, not COVID related. So I was with her. So I took a break. And then when I went back to US, America's Got Talent says, oh, do you want to try out for the show? And that time I was not mentally ready because I just lost my mom and I said you know what what do I have to lose so I tried it and by doing that I started to travel more uh, before I would go to only LA New York and Boston major city but that TV has a, such a huge fan base so then I get to travel and then keep on doing stand up then I, I really respect stand-up comedians and like, um, you know, a lot of people don't know what you have to go through to develop your talent. 
you know, and like mm. for a lot of people for the first few years, you know, you're, you're just working out material, learning how to, you know, relate to people, learning how to be funny on stage. At what point do you feel like you uh, went from amateur to professional, you know, in your career? Was there a turning point in you doing stand up comedy? I think, to be honest, I always struggle with, am I good enough? And I used to feel bad about that. And I think it's actually strength because I'm not sure, am I good enough? And then, but then keep on going. And I think people would see that. Like I have a lot of disadvantage when it comes to stand up because this is not my language. I'm extremely shy. So these are the thing, it's kind of, um, advantage right but then I think my stand-up is not just telling a joke I want to inspire people so like by watching me either you like my joke or not I want people to like try out on the things they are afraid of like either I don't know what is the thing people do is what they want to be like astronaut or they want to ask uh, girl uh, whatever the things like they want to but then they are too afraid and I hope of them watching that Watching me, like, they will feel, like, somewhat, like, inspired to do things through me. And I think that's why it's not, like, strength, but, like, my weakness become uh, my thing. I mean, I don't know too many stand-up comedians that, you know, do their stand-ups in, you know, their non-native language. So, I mean, yeah. in and of itself must be... Um, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that must be a big challenge. I mean, can you speak to that, like... Um, what are the challenges yeah. of doing it in, you know, in English? Yes. Yes. So in Japanese, I know for sure it's funny. When I say it, I meant to say it. Sometimes in English, I say something that's not what I meant to say. So then it could be good and bad because that's not what I meant to say and turn out to be funny or that's not what I meant to say and then turn out to be flat. So it's kind of like a gambling. And sometimes people ask me like, oh, you know, if you do stand up in English, you should try in Japanese. And I think trying stand up in Japanese is way more scary because if I do it and people don't laugh, I'm just not a funny person. But when I do stand up here and in English, then they go, oh, she tried in different language. So it's like a little bit cheating. It's just like, ah, oh, you're trying and, you know, to speak different language and trying to make us laugh. There's like a blank or some, some kind of like fallback to it. But in Japanese, if I say something, they don't laugh. They're like, she's just not funny. A little related to that, what are some challenges that you face as a, you know, stand up in America as an Asian female? I mean, I know there's a lot of things there, but um, if you could speak to that for from your experience. You know, it's so strange. I I know this format is about being Asian and a minority, right? But when I think of myself, like, I don't think, like, I'm an Asian female comic. I just go in as a comic. But the thing is how people see it, right? Like, it, it is a fact I'm Asian, female comic but then my mind I don't think that it's just the struggle in very simple form is when I don't do well it might not relate to culture or me being female but as a comic when I cannot get the audience because I want to I think the reason why I want to do stand up is you know being famous money probably good but I genuinely want to make people happy so when I'm not capable it's my skill set is lacking that's really frustrating one more question regarding uh, stand-up comedy and then we can uh, pivot from that uh, what, okay. what was the most significant moment of your career I have it in my head what I think it might be but I, I'm not sure so uh... <laughs> well, I want to know what is it okay so my significant moment was definitely being able to perform for America's Got Talent. And when Howie was like, because I said I wanted to tell the world, you know, my mom was great and she wanted me to do stand-up because she believed that I could do it. And then Howie said, 
Your mama is right. I had one person who really believed in me, which is my mom. I think your career is about to skyrocket, young lady. <laughs> mama is right. Heidi! And that kind of like, that was a moment for me because I grew up a single mom, and uh, obviously my dad didn't think highly of my mom, so he left. And other family member didn't think my mom is was that great, and she's so awesome. Like you know, I have a really bad grade, and then she keep on saying it doesn't matter. Like you are kind, you are funny, and these are more important, and these are the reason why I love you. So she was kind of molding me. When I fail in the society, but I'm still loved. So whenever I did a bad in stand up, sometimes comic is like such a hard life, right? So people might have depression or whatever. Uh, luckily, I didn't have to struggle with it because I had mom. It was easy for me to get back on my feet whenever I fail because just so much love. So when Howie said that to me, like your mom was right, I was like, yeah, like take this dad kind of thing. <laughs> and, and also, since I had so much rejection, like when I started, they're like, oh, her accent is too thick or people are like, she's not that funny. It kind of, it gives me wing to like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Because until then, to be honest, with my social media, it was just my name, Aiko Tanaka. On that moment, I changed my social media to Aiko Comedy. I'm like, I think I'm going to do that. So I think, I think that was such a huge moment for me. That was a beautiful moment because I, I saw that you got really emotional, you know, during the mm. audition. So, man, um, yeah, that was that was what I thought you would say. And I'm, I'm glad um, I was right. Oh, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's uh, end off with maybe a little fun fire round. And so okay. I'm just going to give you a series of prompts or questions. And you just got to give me what's like the first thing that pops in your head. I'll give you okay. a brief moment after you answer just to kind of explain. Uh, I love this kind of thing. Yeah, but you got to be quick, okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Top three favorite comedians of all time. Top three favorite comedian? You just bring a fire question like that from the top? Paula Poundstone. Brent Weinbach. Charlie Chaplin. Oh, sorry. Howie Mandel. You can't sneak a fourth in there. <laughs> Can I keep on going? Okay, sorry. I love Paula because she is off and it's just such a beautiful world. And so is Brent. Uh, Howie, is, he's just like, he's my guy. I would love to meet him again. Uh, it's a wonderful comic, also wonderful human being. Charlie Chaplin, I love his life story. And he took his, how do I say, like really sad life situation into comedy and was able to make everybody laugh, just physical without any language. I think it's so amazing. West Coast versus East Coast? LA, I like LA. I like stuck in traffic. I like very uh, laid back. I love LA because I like how people try to be healthy all the time. Shoes on in the house for the rest of your life or, or, you can't eat rice ever again. You have to choose like one or the other. This is offensive question. So shoes on in the house so everywhere. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna make it. Um, how do I say substitution? Slippers, because I have to wear slippers. I cannot do barefoot. Barefoot it really freaks me out. So then slippers in the house, and I'll be able to eat organic brown rice still. Wow, she found a loophole. <laughs> okay, I got to fix that question next time. Okay, um, K-pop or J-pop? K-pop or J-pop? Oh my God, I'm so sorry, my people, but K-pop is very really happening. When it comes to like singing and dancing and they're looking beautiful, and then they have like, oh, you know, they fix or whatever. It looks, they all look beautiful. It's like the art. It's amazing. So uh, I must say K-pop. All right, final question. What is the most difficult English word for you to pronounce? So many. There's so many. Like, literary is hard. Arnold is hard because it has an R and an L in there. Remember the guy who owned Lululemon? They're like, oh, we may just think because Japanese cannot pronounce L. We have an L in alphabet. We don't have R. We don't have TH. We do not have a V sounds. So... V is not too hard, but um, 
Because there's so many words I still cannot say. Okay, that's it. <laughs> it was so fun. 